All right, so I got my parts caster, my Squire parts caster back from the Luthier. Uh, I've been talking about it a bit. Let's take a look and see how it turned out. Okay, so this is my early 2000 Squire part caster. The parts come from early 2000 Squire guitars. The neck from a 2001 Squire Affinity. The body from a very uh, limited uh, run uh, Squire SC100 uh, that was done here in Europe only in 2002. So basically a 20 year old part caster here. Uh, what I did and what I didn't do, I think, is worth mentioning. I thought that today we would talk about the things that I did do to make this a complete guitar and the things that I didn't do in order to keep the cost down. Before we get started today, just a little bit of housekeeping. Check this out. Upstairs to the Right Music has released a new album with our in-house band Asinoki, titled Ants in the Pantry. Support this channel by going to bandcamp.com and buy your copy today. All right, so here it is. Uh, this is my early 2000 Squire part caster that I put together. Uh, extremely proud of this and how I put it together. Very quickly, I'd like to go through some things that you can do in order to keep the cost of your part caster down to a minimum. Uh, now, uh, one of the first things you want to do is plan out where you're trying to go. With this guitar, it was my intention to try to replicate a 1972 Fender Stratocaster. So if Squire came out with their own version of it, what would that look like approximately? And this is what it would look like if they did so. So that was my plan and I was able to achieve that plan. Uh, and I was able to achieve it by first finding parts that were good. Uh, in the case of this neck, this 2001 Squire Affinity neck, um, the parts on it were excellent. The tuners were great. No need to do anything to the nut. The frets were still really great on this. Uh, for an over 20 year old neck, I'm really surprised on how good quality the, the frets were. So those are some of the things that I checked for when I put together the neck portion of this guitar. Something that I could buy secondhand that was already good to go. That way I didn't have to invest money in buying tuners, a new nut, or having any kind of serious fret work done. The next thing comes to the body. Uh, same thing with the body. Again, uh, color was very important, so I was able to find a color that matched that 1972 Squire. That was the first little bit. I was very lucky in the fact that this one is 20 years old, over 20 years old, so it started to develop a patina here on the pit guard, the knobs, and the, uh, the switch here. And that is a patina that you really cannot fake, just like the patina on this neck, another reason why I went for this. Uh, it's got 20 years of age on it and it makes it look great. Now, a lot of people will tell you the first thing you should do when you're putting together a parts caster like this is take out the pick guard uh, and put in a loaded pick guard. Now, if you do something like that, you've broken the first rule of part casters. The first rule of building a parts caster is investing as little money as possible, but still coming off with something better than you would find off the rack. So uh, putting together a fully loaded pit guard was certainly something that you don't want to do. What I would recommend that you do instead is uh, invest in the pots that are in there. A lot of these old squires and current squires have mini pots in them. Uh, it would take a very little bit of money and scrounging around, you could probably find for free if you have a part spin like I do, or if not, uh, they're not expensive to go ahead and put in full size 250K pots in here. That is the only change uh, in terms of investing uh, uh, new parts into this guitar that I have done. It also needed a new jack uh, inside, but uh, so the, those three things are the investments that I've made into this guitar and that only. Generally with the two tone knobs on your Strat, that corresponds with your, uh, your neck and your middle pickup. Uh, the reason it's wired this way classically since the 50s is because Leo Fender liked swing music, he liked Hawaiian music, and for that kind of music, there was really no need to have that kind of control over the bridge pickup because it cut through uh, the mix. So when you were in the bridge, you know, you were really cutting through the mix with that. Times change, tastes change, people start to find it a little bit too 
prickly, a little bit too icy on the high end. And so a lot of things, again, uh, lead to the path of people thinking about changing their pickups. Well, uh, I did one mod, a simple mod to this. I took the tone control away from the middle pickup and I switched it to the bridge pickup only. So now, that bridge pickup has some taper to the tone, which makes it really, really usable to me. So again, up here in the neck also, we have tone, but here in the middle, it's wide open. There's no tone on it and that's fine. Because you really want to have that middle quack wide open. So it doesn't really make a difference, especially if you're fond of your four position. It doesn't change the tone of it either. And that simple mod does give you a lot more control over that bridge pickup, which is something that makes this a little bit better than you would find in a Squire CV as well, I might mention. This is the Gibson Multi-Tool. For about $15, you can have one of these. This has everything that you need to make any kind of adjustments to, uh, to your uh, Stratocaster that you can think of. So really a very inexpensive investment. And once you buy one, you've got it forever. Not just strats, but also of course, uh, Les Pauls. So again, like I said, a few things that you can do in your planning uh, for putting together your parts caster, uh, some things that you really should uh, think about not investing into until you've had some time to uh, work with the things that you should be investing into. I would think more it's cheaper to invest in switching your pots than it is your pickups. It's a whole lot cheaper than putting a loaded pick guard in there as well, I might add. So uh, you want to really think about uh, the steps that you want to go through. First of all, what is your end vision? I wanted to get a copy of a 1972 uh, Stratocaster out of this and I do believe uh, that is what I have achieved here. Uh, again, uh, keeping that patina was very important to me, so there was no need for me to go ahead and think about switching any of the pickups or pick guard. Uh, work with what I had. It's great. It's okay. Uh, I think your big, big investment really should be down in your electronics. Uh, switch those uh, mini pots to full-size pots. Uh, think about uh, putting in a new switch if it's needed. If not, then keep it. Uh, think about that modification that I did of taking the tone and moving it to your uh, bridge pickup. Uh, a few simple things that, oh, on that, by the way, there are some people who will do that mod and they'll switch it between the, uh, instead of having it on just the bridge alone, they'll have it sharing between the middle and the bridge pickup. That creates tone suck and that's something that I don't recommend that you do. Uh, you, really, without a, a tone, the middle pickup sounds just fine. It's got that. It's got that quack to it. So you're not really missing anything there. You still can control the volume on it. On it. You, you can still control the vibes. You know, switching between a Strat and, and, a, and a Gibson, it's a, it's a learning process that I'm going through here, but to just to know where those knobs are without looking. <laughs> but yeah, you still have a great middle sound there and you have more control over your bridge pickup. So that's a win-win in my opinion. So uh, again, a mod that doesn't cost much to do. It should not add to the time that it takes for your Luther to do a finishing setup on this after you've done an initial setup on it. Again, another way to save money. Uh, that I recommend. I really think, again, stressing that with this part caster, I'm in about 200, yeah, I'm in exactly uh, 200 euros into this parts caster and it's done, it's finished. Don't have to do anything else to it. I just have to make adjustments to get it to where I like it. Um, if I were to get the Squire CV, I guess equivalent of this, if they have such a thing in this color, which I know they don't, uh, it would cost me 399 euros. Now, uh, honestly speaking, uh, that 200 euro savings is 200 euros that I could put into buying another one of these, putting it together, and I could have two complete guitars for the cost of one of those new CV Squires. Something to think about. Thus, the importance of keeping the cost down of your parts caster when you put it together. 
Now, uh, I sprung for a, a case, as you saw there in the opening, uh, an investment that I think is also uh, worth putting into. Uh, that was B stock, so I got a deal on it. Uh, but definitely, you want to get a case for your guitar to keep it nice, uh, to keep it uh, from uh, developing any dings, nicks, or problems that you don't necessarily want it to have. The good dings are are uh, are good dings, bad dings are a nightmare. <laughs> so uh, get a case for it uh, to keep it nice. Uh, another small investment that you can make into having a super, super strat or telly, whatever you're putting together uh, using Squire parts uh, that you will have for years to come uh, that you'll be very happy about. Uh, I'm extremely happy with this. I think that uh, this is really a fantastic uh, sounding Strat. I think that for the money that I put into it, and, and this is super light by the way guys, uh, it, it's, it's phenomenal how light this is. Uh, and that helps a lot too, makes it really nice. I think that for the money that I've invested in putting this together, I've come out a winner. There is no way you're going to get something this nice off the rack for 200 euros. It's just not gonna happen. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my thoughts on putting together your own part caster, some things to do and some things not to do, uh, some things to plan ahead of for. And if you take all this in stride, I think you'll come out a winner. Uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, hit the like button if you like the content of this channel. Uh, if you haven't done so so far, I would love it if you'd hit the subscribe button as well and join us in this community that we're building here. Uh, we have a live stream that we do every Sunday night called Sunday at Mike's at 11 p.m. Central European time. So wherever that finds you in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, I would love it if you took the time to show up. And until the next one, guys, you take care. Bye-bye.